Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time, Kraft presents from Hollywood, California, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, here's what a prominent government official said about nutrition not long ago. This official said that in times like these, proper nutrition is as important as fighting planes. Yes, we all need the right foods and plenty of them to keep up the pace our great defense effort demands. So you'll be glad to know that parquet margarine, made by Kraft, is one of the right foods and that it's so economical you can use all you need. You see, parquet margarine not only has delicious flavor that makes it grand for table use, baking, and pan frying, parquet contains lots of valuable food elements, too. Yes, wholesome parquet margarine is a highly nutritious food. In fact, one of the best energy foods you can serve. And what's more, every pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. But just because parquet margarine is good for you, don't think it isn't good tasting. Why, parquet's delicate, appetizing flavor has made it a favorite with families all over the country, both for table use and for cooking. So try it. Buy a pound or two of delicious parquet margarine tomorrow. Yes, ask your dealer for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve, and his niece and nephew, Marjorie and Leroy. They're trying to entertain a friend of Marjorie's, Oliver Honeywell, a chap who's taken so many pills that he's beginning to look like one. Today, Oliver is the man who came to lunch and stayed through tea and dinner. It's after nine now, and a quiz game is in progress. <laughs> Yeah. Now, the next question is for you, Uncle Mort. Okay. I love quizzes. Let's hear it, Leroy. Well, what's the difference between Niagara Falls and your friend Judge Hooker? There's no difference. They're both big drips. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's wrong. Oh, is it? The difference between them is that Niagara is a mountain fountain and the judge is a legal eagle. Oh, oh yeah. Leroy. Well, I see. Now whose turn is it? <laughs> it's your turn next, Oliver. Uh -huh. Boy, this one's a sin. <laughs> Can you tell us who was the third assistant secretary of agriculture in President McKinley's administration? Oof. Oh, that wasn't fair, Leroy. No, that, that's too hard, Leroy. Oh, no, 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 it isn't. Uh, third assistant secretary of agriculture in McKinley's administration, uh, Lucius Ann Follinsby. Yep, that's right. I, I remember. <laughs> it is? Well, that's great, Oliver. Oliver, that's wonderful. Oh, really, it's nothing. A fellow shouldn't get any credit for remembering his own grandfather's name. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you had me fooled for a minute. I thought you were smart. Yes, Leroy. Well, <laughs> next is Marjorie's turn. Huh? huh? Sis, what does it mean if you say, throw up the sponge? Um, I give up. Absolutely correct. Oh, yeah. Very good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, the scores so far are Oliver, 27, uh -huh. Marjorie, 19, and Uncle Mort, minus two. Uh, young man, <laughs> what do you mean, minus two? You answered one question wrong twice. It's twice? <laughs> now, here's your chance to make up, Uncle. Huh? It's an arithmetic. Arithmetic. If Jones buys 50 bales of hay and 100 bushels of barley for $300... Yes? ...and the barley costs four times as much as the hay, how much did each bale cost? Oh, my. Let me get paper and pencil. Uh, 50 bales, 100 bushels... Three hundred dollars. Mr. Jones should have bought defense bonds. <laughs> the idea. Oh, what's that? Half past nine. Leroy, I've got a question for you this time. If 9.30 equals your bedtime and you haven't done your homework yet, how do you expect to know your lessons tomorrow if you have to go to sleep now? Gee, that's an easy one, Uncle Mort. All those questions I've been asking you people are my homework. Oh, well, it's all done. It is? <laughs> You're a bright boy, Leroy. Say, can we just finish this game, Uncle Mort? Yeah, I sort of lost interest in this Gee, game. I thought it was fun. So. You would. Oh. Now scamper off to bed, Leroy. Gee whiz, I'm not a bit sleepy. Why can't I stay up? It's the same thing every Sunday night. 
First Jack Benny, then Charlie McCarthy, and after that, trying to get Leroy to go to bed. But, Uncle Mort, you stay up a lot later than this. Why can't I? Because you're growing, Leroy, and I'm not. No? Maybe not in the same direction as I am. Heaven up, Leroy. Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh. Leave Uncle's waistline out of this. You leave it out. You brought it in. Yep. <laughs> children, children, let's drop my waistline. It's dropped too far already. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, young man. Oh, are you going to bed, Uncle Mort? Sweet dream. No, you're the one who's going to bed. Yes, and let's not discuss it anymore. But, but... but... That's all, brother. <laughs> but it isn't fair. It's not democratical. I'd like to stay up as late as everybody else. Well, let me see. Can I, Uncle Mort? Uh, promise to go to bed the minute we do? Gee, of course I promise. Then you can remain up as late as Marjorie and I. Boy, that's keen. Well, I'm pretty sleepy right now. How about you, Marjorie? What? Oh, yes, yes, uh... Oh, I can hardly keep my eyes open. Yeah. Oh, I catch on. It's a trick to make me go to bed now. <laughs> You've made your bed, Leroy. Now get into it. <laughs> In that case, maybe I should... I'll get it. Well, if that's my mama, you tell her not to worry. Yeah. Leroy. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi, Pig. Yeah, pe- it's for me. It's Piggy Banks. Piggy huh? Banks. What did you say, Pig? What for? Oh, no, no, Uncle Mort wouldn't... Huh? No, I wouldn't even ask him. Oh, it's too bad, Pig, but that's the breaks of the game. Goodbye. Uh, I don't want to intrude in your private affairs, Leroy, but what is it Piggy Banks wanted to do? Oh, he wanted to come over here tonight to carve out his pumpkin for Halloween. Well, I'd have no objection to that. Yeah, but he wanted to use you for the model. You? <laughs> you go straight to bed, young man. We're all going to bed now. Oh. Uh, oh, in that case, maybe I should. Yes, you should, Oliver. Oh. Uh, good night. Uh, Marjorie, don't let Oliver forget his overcoat tonight. It's awfully chilly, and he might catch something he hasn't got already. <laughs> Mr. Gillsleeve, I didn't bring any overcoat. I didn't expect to be invited for tea and dinner, too. I... Invited? Uh, oh, oh, my. I hate to think of you going clear across town on the streetcar. Oh, Midgey, the streetcar doesn't bother me. It's the waiting and the walking. Yes, and in the dark, too. <laughs> Say, uh, why don't you stay here for the night, Oliver? Oh, that's a splendid idea. Where can we put him, Uncle Moore? Uh, on the sofa in the study. It's the kind that collapses into a bed. <laughs> oh, no, thanks, really. I don't think I should. Why not? I'll fix you up with a pair of my pajamas. Oh, I don't think I could sleep in a strange pair of pajamas. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, besides, uh, besides huh? that, don't you think they'd be a trifle large? Oh, come, come, Oliver. It'll be fun. Like sleeping in a tent. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll bring out a couple of spare blankets and a pillow. Oh, yeah. never mind the pillow, Midgey. I'm allergic to feathers. Uh, feathers? Is that so? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, I have it so bad I even break out with spots when I eat chicken broth. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you better telephone your parents and tell them you won't be home tonight, Oliver. Oh, yes, I better. Otherwise, Mom would have to send Pop out to look for me. Uh, then she'd have to go out to look for Papa. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll get the blanket. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mama. Mama, this is Oliver. Yes. What's that? Papa's been out looking for me already. Well, it isn't ten yet, Mama. Oh, he wanted to get an early start. Uh, you better go find him, Mama. Uh, try the place on the corner. Oh, not the drugstore. The place in the other corner. I don't know why he always goes there. I never do. Well, you just push open the doors and call in. That's a... What? Oh, I'm still at Midgey's house. Yeah, Mama. They invited me to spend the night here on account I didn't bring an overcoat. I did? I must have left on a streetcar, huh? Well, I got my pills. Uh, don't worry, I'll keep out of drafts. Good night, Mama. Poor Mama. You know, she doesn't seem to realize that I'm a big boy now. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's very hard to believe, Oliver. Oh, I, I almost forgot. Here. Uh, what's this nickel for? Oh, for the phone call. I never like to be under obligations to people. Yes, I can see that. Uh, everything's ready for you, Oliver. Yeah, go right in and make yourself comfortable, Oliver. I'm going to lock up. Uh-huh. Oh, be sure all the downstairs windows are fastened, Uncle Mort. There have been some burglars in the neighborhood lately. Burglars? Oh, don't worry, Oliver. Go right in and get ready for bed. If a burglar ever saw you in my pajamas, he'd put back everything he took. <laughs> I wonder who built these windows. The Pullman Company? Oh, Oh, my bunion. Oh, 
Uh, almost forgot to wind the kitchen clock. <laughs> Somebody already wound it. Oh, oh, excuse me, Aesop. <laughs> I didn't mean to step on your tail. <laughs> now, Scat Cat, scram, go, outside. Yeah. Everything locked up tight, Uncle Moore? Yes, a burglar would need three policemen to help him get in here. <laughs> oh. uh, excuse me, I guess it was the company we had for dinner. <laughs> Well, see you in the morning. Huh? Good night, Uncle Mort. Yeah, good night, my dear. Good night, Uncle Mort. What? You still up? Uh, good night, Leroy. Good night, Uncle Roy. Good night. What's that? Who? Oh, oh, good night, Oliver. <laughs> Somewhere near here. How about let's go on and see? You better ask your Uncle Mort first. Okay. Hey, Mom and Pop. Hey, Uncle Mort, can I go to a fire? Huh? What's that? There's a fire somewhere as close. Can I go see it? A fire? Oh, boy, I haven't done one for years. And I just love to go to blazes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hurry up, Uncle Mort, hurry. No, no, not that door. That's the bathroom. Oh, excuse me. I should have known. This way. Yeah, thanks. Now let's hurry outside or the fire will be out before we are. <laughs> Gee, this is fun. Huh? Huh? Hey, Marge, let's go. Here's Uncle Mort. Yeah, let's get Oliver. You think he'd be interested? Sure, it'll be a tonic for his nerves. <laughs> oh, Oliver. Yes, Mama, I'm getting off. You? <laughs> I'm not your mama. Come on outside with us. Hurry up. What's wrong? There's a fire, Oliver. Fire? Oh, oh my goodness. Come on, let's go. Oh, right oh, way up. Follow me. Wait. Wait for us, Oliver. Uh, Leroy, bring Oliver's shoes. Hey, come on, Marjorie. Hey, Oliver, come back here. Where's the fire? It's somewhere around the corner, Oliver. Is it coming this way? No, we're going that way. Come on. <laughs> Here's your shoes, Oliver. You better put them on before you wear out your socks. Oh, thanks, Leroy. Uh, all right, let's not spend all night here. The fire won't wait for us, you know. Oliver, you can tie your shoelaces afterward. Oh, as you say, Mr. Gill. Oh, oh, on second thought, Oliver, you better tie them now. I might as well, now that I'm down. Gee, this is the latest I've been out since the night I went walking in my sleep. Yeah, well, let's take a quick look at the fire and scoot back to bed. I wonder whose house it is. Well, we'll soon see. I think the engine's right around the corner. They are? Oh, oh I yes, see a lot of people. Yes, there they yeah. are. Gee, look at all the neighbors. There's nothing like a good fire to bring out all the best people. <laughs> Everybody must have gotten up. Huh? Oh, look, there's Edie Quinn. Wearing the same kimono she wore to that fire last year. Yes. We carry on. Well, here we are. I don't see any fire. I better find out what this is all about. Uh, let me through here, please. I excuse me, lady. Oh, uh, pardon me, chief, but could you direct me to the fire? Mister, I wish you could direct me. We can't find it. Oh, well, it may be a little unprofessional, but have you asked anybody? Say, that's an idea. Thanks. Oh, it's all right. Uh, quiet, please. Let's have quiet, everybody. Yes, quiet. Uh... Now, did anyone here turn in a fire alarm? Oh, Excuse me. I was the one who called. Oh, hello, Mrs. Beasley. Well, where's the fire? Oh, there isn't any fire. My poor little cat is stranded on top of that telephone pole up there. What? Yes. Oh, good grief. Madam, do you mean you got us all out of bed and dragged the firemen away from their gin rummy game just to look at a cat? Oh, disappointed because someone's home isn't burning down. <laughs> huh? I know who you are. You're the man who does want to set the world on fire. <laughs> now, see here, Mrs. Uh... Oh, this is Mrs. Huh? Beasley, Uncle Mort. Mrs. Beasley, this is my uncle, Mr. Gildersleeve. How do you do? Uh, charmed, I'm sure. Now, see here, Mrs. Beasley. What do you mean by waking up the whole neighborhood? Now, take it easy, mister. I won't take it easy. Chief, are you going to waste the taxpayer's money climbing telephone poles for tomcats? Well, what's wrong with that? Well, give me a reason why you should go to all that trouble. Sure, I'll give you a reason. This lady happens to be the mayor's sister-in-law. Yeah, uh, just as I thought. Politics. Hey, boys. Yeah. Get out the 40-footer and bring down that cat. Right. Thank you, Chief. I'll see that my brother-in-law hears about this. Yes, and I'll see that the newspapers hear about it, too. 
I'll write letters to the editors. And I write a nasty letter, madam. <laughs> and as for you, Chief, you're paid to fight fires, not to go sky hooting around town all night. Now, I've heard enough out of you, fatso. Yep. If you don't pipe down, I'll turn you over to the police, you big false alarm. I'm a false alarm, you little brass pole polisher. Take off that fireman's uniform and say that. Now, don't get so hot under the collar, beach crust, or I'll have the boys cool you off with a hose. I'm not afraid of you and all your little squirts. <laughs> You twitch a thumb at me, and I'll push that tin hat of yours so far down, you'll have to breathe through a straw. <laughs> well, now you have gone too far. Logan! Yes, sir. Here, hold my coat. That suits me. Oliver! Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? Keep off the grass, you'll get your feet wet. <laughs> hey, look! Look, they've got the cat down, Uncle Mort. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Where's the lady that owns the cat? Please. Right here, Kelsey. Now I've seen everything. The idea using thousands of dollars worth of fire equipment, waking up hundreds of people in the middle of the night just to snag a mangy cat off a telephone pole. Here it is, lady, safe and sound. Uh, Thank you very much. Oh, dear me, this isn't my cat at all. Well, now it isn't even her cat. Lady, if you aren't... Shh, Uncle Mort. Yes. What's wrong, Marjorie? I'll tell you what's wrong, Mr. Gildersleeve. This is your cat. Yeah. <laughs> Our cat? Yes. Uh, Aesop? <laughs> is that a hot one? Oh, my goodness. Let's get home. Come on, children. Uh, come on, Aesop. Uh, goodbye, Chief. Thank you, boys, for doing a noble and humane deed. Ah, go back to bed, you big mattress. Oof. Come on, man, let's go. I don't like the way he said that. <laughs> Too bad there wasn't a fire. We could have at least gotten warm. Oh. Oliver, don't you dare catch a chill. I'll try my best not to, Minji. Wish I'd brought along my cold pills. Uh, let's hurry into the house, Oliver. We'll fix you up a nice hot cup of... Uh, well, what can you drink a nice hot cup of? Water, if it's distilled. Uh. <laughs> well, it'll be nice to get back into a nice warm bed. Uh, open the door, Leroy. Okay. Oh, it's locked. Yep. Locked? Why didn't I go home on a stream time? Uh, <laughs> I don't get excited. Don't be nervous. Uh, take it easy, everybody. I have the key right here. Right here in my pants pocket. Oh, no. No what? No pants. <laughs> I'm just wearing pajamas. Here, let me try that door. Ooh, no shoes either. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's stuck. No, we're stuck, Oliver. The wind must have blown us shut. Well, I guess the joke's on us. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't get it. You keep asking questions like that, Oliver, and you'll get it all right. There must be a window around the side or in back that I could climb into. No, Leroy. Before we went to bed, I made sure that everything was locked as tight as a drum and a bagpipe band. Oh, wait a minute. We forgot something. Uh -huh. I know how we can get in. You do? Well, what is it? Birdie. A clever girl, Marjorie. Birdie, yeah. Come on, everybody. Where are we going now, Midget? We're going to see if we can wake Birdie, our maid. Yes. Oh, Birdie. Oh, Birdie! Oh, Birdie! Yeah. Too many Birdies. Uh, let me do it, <laughs> uh, Oh, Birdie. Yes, yeah, Mr. Gill, please. Uh, uh, Birdie, uh, will you please come downstairs and open the front door? Come downstairs? Open the front door? Yes, I'm locked out. And so is Marjorie and Leroy and Oliver. What an unfortunate coincidence. Yes, Bertie, quit stalling and hurry down here. I would if I could, Mr. Gilsley, but I just can't. Why can't you? Because I'm locked out, too. What? If... <laughs> Bertie, aren't you upstairs? No, sir, I'm right here on the back porch. Oh, this is a pretty pickle of fish. How did you get locked out? Well, I just got home from a lodge meeting. Yeah. You know, the mysterious and bewildering orders of the daughters of Cleopatra. Yeah. <laughs> I the head Sphinx. Yeah. Yeah, Sphinx? You are? Yes, sir. And I found the back door bolted. You know, that's contrary to the customary procedure. Yes, well, I wonder if the people next door have got a pass key. Oh, they went away on their weekend. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting terribly cold. Maybe I'd better go home after all. Uh, no, Oliver. We'll get inside in two shakes of a jiffy. Oh. Uh, the only trouble is all the downstairs windows are locked. If we could only reach the second floor. I can do it. If you boost me up, I can climb this tree and then crawl out on that branch and drop down on the roof of the porch there. Who do you think you is, Leroy? A Superman man? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I won't let you risk your neck, my boy. You're too young. I do it myself, only why ruin a tree that never did me any harm? Oh, 
Oh, dear. Now, isn't it too bad that we don't have anyone big enough and thin enough to come to our rescue? <clears throat> it's getting colder, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I can't help thinking what King Arthur or one of his knights would do on a case like this. Yes, it, <clears throat> I believe it is getting colder. <laughs> Why, he'd leap off his horse, spring to the tree, and just, just swarm up to his lady love's window. I'd only brought along some of my vitality tablets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the use? Oliver, why don't you go climb a tree? Who, me? Midge, you know I get dizzy spells from high places. <laughs> Oliver, it's really very easy. You can do it with your eyes shut. Oh, I don't like this. Give him a boost up, huh? Can't you see he's raring to go? Uh-huh, raring to go home. Yeah. <laughs> Come, Oliver, you've got to be brave. Pull up my pajamas. Mm. No, I mean the ones you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. Now tighten your belt. I didn't say yes. You shook your head. Can I help it if I shiver in the affirmative? <laughs> well, now uh, you take his other leg, Leroy. Okay. Yeah. Careful now. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Grab hold of the branch, Oliver, right above you. Well, yeah. don't drop me. I bruise easily. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. I'm right below you. Mm -hmm. Now just pull yourself up. Uh... No, no, Oliver. Go the other way. You're getting out on the wrong limb. Gee, if I only had my slingshot here, I'd head him in the right direction quick enough. Zero. Uh, keep going, Oliver. You're doing fine. Right. Oh, what are you stopping for now? The spring on my pajamas, bro. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Ah! Oh, I'm falling. Oh. 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 I made it. <laughs> I landed on the roof. Yeah, well, congratulations, Oliver. I never thought you'd make it. How about it, Missy Widgie? Am I as good as any night? Oh, yes, Oliver, you're wonderful. Yeah. By George, for a week night, he finished strong on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. All right, Oliver. Now just climb in one of the windows and all our troubles will be over. Mr. Gildersleeve? Huh? I've got bad news for you. What? There aren't any windows over the porch. <laughs> what? A porch without windows? I never heard of such a thing. Let me look. Well, that's one for Ripley. <laughs> you better come on down, Oliver. Oh, I can't reach that limb again. Uh, Jeepers, we've stranded Oliver. Is that bad? Now what are we going to do, Unc? Well, there's only one thing to do. I've got to get a ladder someplace. And a piece of string. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Oliver. Well, oh, hurry, Mr. Gillespie. It's terribly cold up here. Yeah. <laughs> the people in the back got a nice big ladder. Yeah? Why don't you just pussyfoot over and throw the bar? Well, uh, thanks, Bertie. I suppose that's all I can do. Uh, children, you just stay where you are. And, Oliver, uh, don't go away. Very funny. <laughs> I'll be back just as soon as I can, Oliver. Fine state of affairs when a man can't break into his own home. Well, that's what you get for chasing fires in the middle of the woods. <laughs> Oh, it's you, Aesop. Out of my way, you Siamese snake in the grass. Now, let me see. There's a loose board somewhere along this fence. Ah, uh, there it is. Tight squeeze, Rockmorton. You should really cut out the starches. <laughs> I wonder where that ladder is. It's as dark here as the back of a coal miner's neck. Who's there? Huh? Speak up or I'll shoot. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, don't shoot, Mrs. Beasley. <laughs> it's only me, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what are you doing in my backyard at this time of night? Uh, what am I doing here? Oh, oh, yes, we were locked out of our house, Mrs. Beasley. You happen to have a ladder I could borrow? It's in the shed. The shed's locked. Well, then, if you could find the key and kind of throw it down to me, oh, I... Nerve. Waking me up, scaring me half to death, and then having the gall. Uh, uh, what did you say, Mrs. Beasley? Wait where you are, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll be right there. Yeah, lovely woman. A break at last. This time we're all set, T.P. Where are you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, right underneath your window, Mrs. Beasley. Directly underneath? Yes, directly underneath. Well, then, catch. Oh! <laughs> oh! Dear, there's dew on the grass. I hope Uncle Mort doesn't get his feet damp. Hey, sis, I did it all right, all right. Boy, that was a thrill. Well, it's only a matter of minutes now. Well, Oliver, it's only a matter of minutes now. Uh, only minutes before I freeze. I wish I brought a parachute. Shh. Who that there? It's me, your Uncle Throckmorton. <laughs> if I ever lay hands on that B B Beasley woman, I'll kill that old cow. <laughs> Why, Uncle, you're soaked. What happened? Uh, she lured me underneath her window and then threw a bucket of water on me. 
I'm going to tell the mayor about this. Oh, that's a shame. But don't you worry. Huh? We'll have you in the house and dry inside of five minutes. Oh, you got the door open? No, not yet, but soon. Poor Oliver's been freezing on that roof. He's freezing. Yes, so I sent Leroy down to the corner to ring the fire alarm. Oh, fine. Oh, my goodness. What'll the chief say when he sees me this time? Uh, can't you stop him, Leroy? I don't think so. Oh. In fact, I'm sure I can. Oh, my. Here we go again. Stop right here, men. Okay. Okay, where is it? Oh, hello, chief. Well, you're just in time. Look. Where? Oh, say, what is this? First a cat on a pole and now a guy on the roof. Who's responsible for this call? Well, it was like this, Chief. Well, if it isn't the taxpayer's best friend in the fire department, severest critic. Huh? Hi, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, hi. Been writing any letters to the newspapers? No. Now, stop teasing, Uncle Moore, Chief. He's just soaked to the skin. Yeah, and that takes in an awful lot of territory. Yeah. <laughs> How about saving those cracks for the fireman's minstrel show and getting our front door open? Oh, is that what you want? Well, why didn't you say so? Hey, Max, yeah. bring an axe. We've got a door to chop down. No, no, no. Can't you just send up a man and a ladder to one of the windows on the second floor? Oh, never mind the axe, Max. Bring a ladder. Okay. Say, Chief, there's a cellar door open around on the other side. The cellar door's been open all this time? Oh, I could kick myself. We could help you with that, too. Yep. <laughs> Thank you just the same, no. Say, boys, I'm awfully sorry about this whole thing. Let me make some amends, huh? How about you all coming in for coffee and sandwiches? Huh? Won't you? Hey, come on. Just for good old Gildersleeve. Huh? Okay, sure. Yeah, come on, come on. Come on. Uh, have another cup of coffee, Chief? No, no, thanks. I've had two already. You've had four, but have another anyhow. Oh. Sandwich, Mr. Grogan? No, no, no. I'm full clear up to here. Incidentally, I made sure that cellar door was locked tight this time. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Grogan. Well, this has been swell, Mr. Gildersleeve, but now we'd better be getting back, boys. Hey, hey, you guys in the kitchen. Yeah. Let's get wheeling. Okay, right. <laughs> well, uh, goodbye, boys. Thanks for everything. Uh, and if I ever have a fire, you'll be the first people I'll call in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like firemen. Say, Uncle Mort, can uh, I go out and watch them leave? Sure, we'll all go out and wave goodbye to them. Come on, Marjorie. Hey, you too, Bertie. Okay, Uncle Mort. Yeah. Well, thanks for the hospitality. Yeah, so long, boys. Okay. Don't take any wooden fire plugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice fellas. <laughs> well, let's get back in. There they go. It's colder out. Catch the door, Bertie. It's good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Again. Yes, this is where we didn't come in. I isn't anybody ever gonna get me down off this road. Oh, Oliver! <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, let me remind you that next Friday is Halloween. And a few mothers are the kind that worry about the children being out and getting into mischief. Here's a worthwhile suggestion for you. Keep the kids at home with a well-stocked pantry. Yes, if you have plenty of popcorn and cookies and cakes on hand, you can be sure the kids won't go very far away. Now, to make popcorn extra good, drench it with plenty of melted parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, that delicate, tempting flavor that makes parquet a favorite for table use makes it delicious on popcorn, too. And remember, use parquet margarine in the cookies and cakes you bake. It makes them tastier because it's a real flavor shortening not just a bland, tasteless fat. And not just at Halloween, but the year round, Parquet Margarine provides your family with wholesome, nourishing food values. Yes, Parquet Margarine is a highly nutritious energy food that contains important vitamin A. So use Parquet Margarine made by Kraft all three ways, at the table, for baking, and for pan frying. It's delicious, it's nourishing, it's economical. Tomorrow, ask your dealer for a pound or two of Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, our time's up. Good night. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at this same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company.